Hey guys, how's it going? Let's jump into another game. I've been playing pretty well today, with the exception of some blunders. So let's see what we get in this game. Here we go, e4, e5, knight's out. And moment of truth, what are we going to get into? The scotch game. So against the scotch game, I have studied it a little bit, and this is called the Schmidt Variation, I believe. Yeah, Schmidt Variation. Oh. Okay. Yep, yeah, we take this way. Um, this I'm not super familiar with. Hmm. So I'm thinking about D5 or d6. The good thing about d5 is it opens up both bishops. He's about to castle. Maybe I should cast. Maybe I should play bishop to c5. Yeah, that seems good. I, I think I remember from studying Schmidt variation that this is not the best move, but it's the easiest move for me. Just because I'm so used to playing c5, you know? That's weird. I just thought for a long time, I felt like, but suddenly our times are even. Okay, we are castling for sure. Oh, no. Okay, let's challenge the bishop. He's just going to drop back. This punk. Oh. I was expecting worse. So we're targeting this pawn now, interestingly. What? No. What is this? Um, maybe I'm falling for something, but I'm taking the pawn. I'm taking the pawn. He can't castle this way because he because he pushed this pawn, he can no longer castle. Thanks to my bishop. See guys, bishop c5. Bishop c5, always consider it in an opening, you know? You got to get your bishop on that diagonal, because even if he hadn't pushed that pawn, it's so nice having the pawn pinned, right? You just drop your bishop back, and you stay there all game long, always with a threat. But this is rough. How do you save that rook, guys? How do you save that rook? What could he do here? If he brings the knight out, I take the rook with check, and then I take the, the knight. <laughs> so that doesn't work. Push this pawn. I take the rook. Ooh, is this a queen trap? No, I'm going to take the rook, and then I'm going to take this rook. If he moves the knight. So I'm going to take. Now, I should probably look at check. No, he's going to push. No, he can't push the pawn. The pawn is pinned. Guys, what is going on here? Check. Um, I don't know. I'm going to take the rook. Now, check. Ooh, this looks a bit scary, guys. Not gonna lie. Check. Got 
Gotta give the check. That is the most obvious move for sure. Oh no. Uh oh. Okay, now I give another check. Oh my gosh, this is getting this is getting scary. <laughs> He's going to probably block with the bishop. Okay, now. If I take the pawn, he takes with the knight, and I'm just done. If I put my bishop here, we're threatening to take the rook. And then if he takes the bishop, I take... I kind of like that idea. So bishop here... Takes, takes, we're hitting the pawn. And we're going to bring our bishop out and hit the queen. Now, I don't have to do anything. What can he do? Well, I have to move my bishop, so I take that back. This pawn is pinned. If I go here... Bring my rook in... Drop back this way, the pawn is pinned. Then I can take this pawn. The bishop is pinned, the pawn is pinned. Let's do that. Let's let's just drop back. You know? Why not? Maintain as many pins as we can. He's going to move his king though, and then I need to I need to figure something out. Or not. <laughs> or he's going to let's see. Drop the pawn. If I take that pawn, then I'm threatening to come back here with check. Let's do that. Take the pawn. These guys are pinned. The knight can come out, but I would just take it. So it wouldn't really make sense. Come back here with check. King moves and then... No, I can't take that pawn. Knight's guarding. Rook to b1, hitting the knight. No, I can't. I can't. Because even though the, the bishop is currently pinned, if I take with the rook and the rook captures, I can't take with the queen because that unpins the bishop. So, yeah. That doesn't work. Okay. So now the bishop is unpinned. But I can drop right back here with a check. Let's let's get out of here. I'm trying I'm gonna untangle this messy situation. Oh gosh, I need to get a rook here. I'm gonna put a rook here, he's gonna put his bishop here. That's the problem.
On the other hand, he's going to put a rook here, like, right now anyway. Um, queen here. I need to guard this square so that if he moves his queen, bishop can come out. How do I do that? Well, I can't really, can I? So how about we put our queen here? Double attack on the pawn. Let's do that. That's That makes sense. That's logical. Double attack with check. Oh, wait, I need to be careful. Queen, rook, bishop, check. Take, take, take with check. So he can't, he doesn't have time to do that. And then I can get out of there. So we can win a pawn, but I don't know if that's a good idea. Honestly. I'm also thinking of just queen to g1. I don't know. Take with check if he moves, then I, oh yeah, see, yeah, if I take this pawn with my bishop, he doesn't have to recapture, he can just step right over here, very nice move. So now I, I really want to give this check. But then if he goes here, what do I do? Yeah, I'm happy to let this situation sit. He's kind of frozen. If he moves his knight, I take it. If he moves here... Then I don't know. Now I can I can do this. Queen out to g1, offer a queen trade. But if he goes up here, what do I have? You know. I have to say he's playing really well. I want to push this pawn. Let's play maybe d5. And then if on passant, see, I, I want to open this diagonal so that I can get a rook here. But at first I have to move my bishop, which I can do very forcingly by putting the bishop here. All right, I like this idea, guys. So in case you didn't follow that, the idea is we want to open up this file and put a rook here because the king and the queen are lined up. If he on passants, then bishop here, bishop over to a6. If he takes, rook to e1 wins the queen. If he doesn't take, oh gosh. All right, fair enough. He didn't fall for it, and he's defending that square now. Very interesting. Now what do I do? <laughs> oh, bishop to b6 threatens checkmate. And that's a better square, because it's guarded. 
That looks very beautiful. Everything defended. Threatening mate. And like, how do you even stop that? How do you even stop that, guys? Queen can't block. Yeah, good move. Now this looks interesting. So check. If the queen blocks, we trade queens, I'm happy. If the king goes up here, well, suddenly, do I have any tricks? Not really. Now, I could go, oh, guys, force a queen trade. Queen to e3. The queen is pinned. It forces a queen trade. I'm going to do it. I, I want to get the queens off the board. I'm up a rook and some pawns, I think. Yeah, I'm up seven points. Let's just get her done. And you know what? This might not be the most efficient way of doing it. I have no idea. That's okay. That is okay. I've got a passed pawn that I can push. And you know, that that's a strategy that works. <clears throat> Excuse me. If he had gone if I had gone here and he goes here. I'm just wondering if I had anything better. Maybe then queen Oh gosh, I've got a cough. I've got something in my throat. Hold on, guys. I'm going to mute for a second. That's weird. Hold on a second. Oh, all right. Well, I'm back. I had trouble unmuting for some reason. That was weird. Um, this is not a move I was expecting. If I give a check... Uh, I don't care. I'm trading queens. That was the whole point. All right. Let's attack this pawn. Pawn is pinned, so I'm going to win the pawn. Ooh, he can put his bishop there now, can't he? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that is a tricky move. So I can go here forking king and bishop. But then when I take the bishop, he takes here. Oh, man. <sighs> Did I mess up here? So I have to push, and then I cannot take the bishop. That's the story. Push. With check. I mean, I'm still going to do it. I can't take the pawn. Yeah, whatever. I can't I can't do much about it. I'm not going to win the bishop. That's a real shame. What? Okay, I do win the bishop. I have no idea what just happened, guys. But okay. Let's push this pawn and prepare to win the knight with a skewer. All right, game over. Good game. See how I did. 93%? Oh my gosh.
That is pretty crazy. So these are all book moves until bishop c5. Remember, that's what I said in the game. I said, this is, I know it's not the best move, but it's the easiest move for me. And if we go to the analysis board, I don't think it's even an inaccuracy. Let's take a look here. Oh, wow. It's actually really bad. Minus point, or okay, zero. I should really play d5 here. <laughs> okay. Lesson learned. D5 and then maybe bishop c5. I don't know. That is crazy. Computer wants d5 so badly. Every single move, it's like d5, d5, d5. This is all fine. Finally, I played d5. It's no longer the best move, but, you know, doesn't matter. Ah, best move, threatening mate. Okay, let's look and see how this plays out, because I felt like there might be something here. But now what? Do I just win a pawn? Oh my gosh, the computer just wants me to win a pawn. Are you kidding me right now? That's a little crazy, because... I don't want to give white counterplay. I want to get the queens off the board and then use my advantage to win. So, Yeah, why didn't he just move? Because I can't take the bishop. I don't get it. Minus 18, if I play rook e6, rook e6, g5, rook f8, it doesn't matter. g5, I don't understand, takes, and now I play, this is nonsense, now I play rook f8, okay, he takes again. And it's mate in one? <gasps> Ooh, nasty. It, and it's mate, but I didn't even see the mate. I just saw the fork. So the point of rook f8 is that we're setting up a fork in my eyes. But even without that, you know, there's also checkmate, if you prefer that. <laughs> All right, uh, that's enough review of that game. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye.